The pros spend day in, day out on their bike and changing gear is second nature to them. But for the rest of us who aren't spending so many hours on our bikes, are we really getting the most out of our gears? Yeah, if you learn how to change your gears more effectively, it can make a significant difference to your riding. And in this video, we're going to show you how to do just that. Let's Come do on, it. Come on, man. I'll change up those gears. Ah! We're going on the attack. Ah! When you first get into riding, there is a lot to think about and changing gears can seem super confusing. It's like, what gear should you be in on the flat? What about going uphill? When should you change gear? There is a lot to it. Right, let's take a quick look at our gears. So your right hand shifter will control the gears at the back of the bike and your left hand shifter will control the gears up front. Now up here you've got two chain rings and I like to call them the big ring and the little ring. Usually you'll have two, sometimes you'll have one, sometimes you'll have three. And essentially the big chain ring is a harder gear and the little chain ring in the, in the inside of the bike is a smaller, easier gear. And this is your front neck and this will essentially change the gear from your big ring to your little ring. On the rear cassettes here, it's actually the smaller cog, which is the harder one. So when you're traveling faster, you need a bigger gear to be able to match the speed you're riding at. That's when you're looking for those smaller cogs down the block to the right hand side. The bigger cog, that is easier for easier riding when you're traveling up climbs. You may hear these cassettes being described in the terms of their speed. So either an eight speed, nine speed, 10 speed, all the way up to 12 speed. There's even a 13 speed option out there now. That is the amount of cogs on that rear cassette. The benefit of having more is that there's smaller jumps, smaller gaps between the gears. So you're not having to jump quite as much to get that cadence right. You might also have heard of your gears be described as an 1128 or a 52. 39. Now those numbers refer to the smallest and biggest gear on the cassette and also on those front chain rings and they can be used to describe different sorts of ratios that you can put onto your bike to get the correct gears the sort of riding you're doing. Those numbers, the 1128 for example, refer to the amount of teeth on each chain ring. So on the cassette and on the chain ring at the front. So a 52 chain ring at the front, that's got 52 teeth the whole way round. Now you can swap these out if you so wish. Most bikes would come with standard gearing, but you can opt for harder gears or easier gears if you want. You can do this by swapping out that cassette on the back, putting one in with the gears that you'd like to match your riding. And same on the front, you can swap those chain rings out to match the sort of riding you're up to too. For example, we're out here in Girona, there's plenty of mountains. So for me personally, I'd look to opt for easier gears so I can cope with those mountains better. But at the same time, if you live somewhere that's super flat, maybe with absolutely banging tailwinds where you're often riding quite fast, you may look to opt for a harder gear to match that style of riding. So that is Gears Explained. Now though, how to actually get the most out of those gears on your bike. And it's not as easy as just saying you need to use this gear for that climb or that gear for that flat road because everyone is different. Everyone has their own personal preference and their own personal cadence they prefer to ride at. Now, I actually prefer to spin my legs a bit more than Manon, for example, and cadence is actually revolutions per minute or the amount of times one leg has one full revolution per minute. And a good ballpark figure to go off is somewhere between 80 to 95 revolutions per minute. You can use a bike computer with a power meter to measure this, but if you don't have one, you can simply count the amount of revolutions per minute with a stopwatch on your bars or a watch on your wrist. Anticipate. Now this is a super important one because there's nothing worse than going into a steep climb being in the wrong gear than having to clunk down all the gears because your bike is not going to thank you for it. You want to start preparing for the climb 
maybe 20 meters before you hit. Start moving your gears down and do it nice and gradually. So then when you get to the really steep bit of the climb, you're in a nice easy gear and you can pedal up efficiently. You don't want to be in your hardest gear like this, going up and then clunking down under load. Big no-no. Obviously sometimes steep climbs come out of nowhere, catch you off guard and just pop up out of the blue. But then it's even more important to keep looking forward and anticipate when a steep climb is coming so you're never caught out. It could be that you're not changing gears as often as you need to. It's really important to try and maintain that same cadence because it will really help with your rhythm when you're riding out on the roads. It's very rare to have such a uniform gradient, have that same slope staying exactly the same wherever you're riding. In reality, roads are always pitching, different gradients always changing. So you need to adapt how you're pedaling to the terrain which you're riding on. So try and make those small gear changes to keep that cadence the same and avoid leaving it too long where you get to the point that you really lose your rhythm and have to totally start again to find that preferred style to your pedaling. It's also worth saying that you don't want to change gears too often and overthink trying to always be in the right gear because if you are pushing on and the riding's getting tough and maybe you're pushing on over a smaller climb there are times when you do need to just dig in push through the effort stick in that gear you're in and try and conquer the road you're on in the best shape possible if you're always always changing gear too often then what's going to happen is you're never going to have the opportunity to put the power down in the first place so sometimes it does pay to keep things simple stick in that same gear in and push on through Are you finding that your gear changes aren't the smoothest and is disturbing your riding a little bit? Well, we've got a few tips to help with that. And essentially, it all comes down to a release in pressure in your pedals when changing gear. Now, we aren't talking about backing off completely, but just a slight little release in pressure is gonna make a big difference and make a gear change nice and smooth. Now, this can take a little bit of practice. So next time you're out on your bike, give it a go until you find just the right amount of pressure release in the pedals to make those gear changes nice and smooth. Something you do really want to avoid in terms of gears is cross chaining. And that is when you have too aggressive an angle of the chain. So it's like you're in the big ring at the front, the big ring at the back, and the chain is so diagonal that it puts quite a lot of pressure on the front derailleurs and the rear derailleurs, which help you to change gear in the first place and potentially damage your chain or chain rings or even lose your chain whilst you're riding, causing you to have to stop and put it back on again. Instead, you want to maintain a more relaxed angle on that chain. So don't be putting it all the way to the back of the cassette. If that's the case, then think about changing the gear at the front. Now, most electronic gears will have a system in place which will avoid you actually doing this in the first place. And of course, some of you will be using one by. That's only one chain ring at the front. And in this case, you don't need to worry about cross chaining at all to use the full spread of those gears at the back. But cross chaining is something you want to avoid, especially on climbs. If it can affect you, it can lead you with a nasty surprise. The gradient starts to bite. So always be conscious of what gear you're in at what time. So it can sneak up on you too. And you're getting pounded by your riding buddies and you forget what gear you're actually in before it's too late. There you go then, that is hopefully a bit of advice that will get you changing those gears a bit more efficiently. Yeah, hopefully this video has helped you. And if you have any of your own tips, please drop them in the comment section below because we'd love to read them. As always, make sure to like and subscribe to support the channel and we'll see you in the next one. Yeah, I might have changed your gears. A bit funny there, man. Well, I'm, I'm gonna, gonna seal your back so battery. This is my one chance to beat you. No!